Suppose this is your service which is running on the internet using a simple web server. In this you have users requesting your web server for resources and the web server serve those resources. This is one of the most basic example of a client server architecture. Let us try to understand the components and working of this architecture before we start with the main topic of scaling. The main component in this setup is a web server which has all the business logic running inside. That web server is eventually a computer where your application is deployed. And if anyone wants to access your application, they need to know the IP address of this server. This is how basically the internet works. Suppose you want to search something on the internet using Google. So from your computer, you need to connect to Google servers via internet. And to do that, you must know the IP address of servers where Google services are running. But do we really know or directly use the IP addresses of Google servers? No, right? We just simply connect to www.google.com. So what exactly is this google.com? It's a human readable domain name which is mapped to the IP address of Google servers. And where all these mappings are present is known as a domain name system or DNS. DNS here acts as an address book that contains mapping of human readable domain names like google.com or facebook.com to a machine readable IP addresses. Computers do not understand what is google.com or youtube.com. If they want to communicate with each other, they will only understand the IP addresses using which they will connect to the other computers. We will discuss how DNS works and all of its components separately. Here just understand that your web server has an IP address which is mapped with a domain name which you have registered as let's say api.myservice.com. So when your client tries to access api.myservice.com, then from DNS its mapped IP address is returned, which the client can use to access the web server. Once the IP address is obtained, HTTP requests are sent directly to your web server. The web server then returns HTML pages or any other resources requested by the client. Now, addition to this, there is one more component which is there in almost all the services, which is data store or database. We are not going to cover it in detail in this video. So let us assume that it's a black box where all the data related to your application and users is stored. So whenever required, our application connects to this box and retrieve or update the data. So with all these components, everything is set for your application. You are happy and your customers are also happy. Let us say you start very small, but as your service is amazing and it becomes an instant hit. So more and more people start using your service, which is amazing, right? The more, the better. More users mean more business results in more revenue. But with the increased traffic, do you think your current setup will work optimally? Because you see, web server is a machine with a finite amount of processing, storage and memory. So it can handle a finite number of user requests at a time. Let us say that limit is 10. Suppose at a given point in time, your web server got 50 requests. So as per its maximum capacity, it starts processing 10 requests. Also, some time will be required to process the request and return the response. So during this time, when the first 10 requests are getting processed, the remaining 40 requests need to wait. As soon as one request completes, then your web server can pick one more request from the remaining 40 requests. You see, this will result in a slow and delayed response for the remaining 40 odd customers. And if it keeps happening, then maybe people will stop using your service. A dissatisfied customer is really bad for the business. I'm sure you do not want that. Now, I hope you understood the problem. So how to handle the increased load in your service? We need to design our system in such a way that it can be scaled with minimum or no efforts. In system design, scaling means the ability of a system to handle an increasing workload or user traffic without compromising its performance. There are different ways to scale a system. Let us start with the most basic one, which is vertical scaling which is also known as scale up. In this, we add more power like increasing processing speed by adding more CPU cores or adding more storage and RAM to the existing servers. It's like upgrading your old laptop instead of buying a new one. When traffic is not very high, vertical scaling is a great option. And the simplicity of vertical scaling is its main advantage. But unfortunately, it comes with limitations. Vertical scaling has a hard limit. It is impossible to add unlimited CPU and memory to a single server. So after some point, 
you may not be able to scale it further. Also, it makes a single point failure in your system because you have only one server and if it is down, then your whole service is down. So if your application is large scale application and traffic is expected to be very high, then you should design your application in such a way that it is horizontally scalable. Horizontal scaling, which is also known as scale out. In this, instead of adding resources in the same server, we can add more number of servers. Those added servers can be used to distribute the high load evenly. So unlike vertical scaling where we try to make one server as big as possible, what if we can add more servers which can help in distributing the load? If your system is able to do this without much effort, then your system is designed to be horizontally scalable. But do you see a new problem here? In the earlier design, we had only one web server which customers were able to connect directly using its domain name. But now we have multiple web servers under horizontally scalable system. So how it will be decided that which user request should go to which server? We need a component which will accept all the requests from customers and redirect to one of the web servers for processing. That component is known as load balancer. Customers connect to the public IP address of the load balancer directly and then load balancer will decide to which web server the request will be forwarded to. All the internal communication should happen using private IP addresses. So with this setup, customers should not be able to connect to the web servers directly. They have to go via load balancer only. Okay, with this we have designed a very simple yet scalable system. If you remember, there were two limitations in the vertical scaling, single point failure and hard limit on increasing resources. Let us see how both these issues are taken care in horizontal scaling. Talking about single point failure, suppose we have these three web servers running and one of the server goes down. In this case, all the traffic will be distributed in two healthy available servers. This prevents the whole system from going offline. In the meantime, issue can be fixed either on the server or a new healthy server can be added to the server pool which will help in balancing the load. Second problem was hard limit on increasing resources. So in this case, we can add as many server instances as needed because there is no such limit in this setup. Horizontal scaling allows us to add more servers in the existing infrastructure to manage increased workload. This approach offers better resource utilization because each server can handle a portion of overall load, ensuring that no single server is overwhelmed. Horizontal scaling has gained popularity due to its better resource utilization and uptime guarantee. But it comes with an overhead of complexity and management challenges. Managing multiple servers adds a layer of complexity to the system architecture. So you need to implement load balancers to distribute the traffic evenly among the servers. In addition to the system complexity, keeping data consistent across multiple servers is also not a very easy task. The horizontal scaling can be cost effective in long run, but initial setup and ongoing management can add additional cost overhead. So the main question that comes to our mind is how to decide whether to opt for a vertical scaling or horizontal scaling. Because trust me, horizontal scaling is no silver bullet. It has its own use cases where it is perfect choice, but not for all the cases. Vertical scaling is useful in environments where a single application runs on a server. It can be used in situations where quick performance improvement is needed without significant architectural changes. Horizontal scaling is ideal for applications with a high traffic such as social media platforms or e-commerce applications. Specifically for microservices architecture, horizontal scaling is a perfect match because then it becomes very easy to scale different microservices independently to handle the increased load. These use cases should help us decide when to use horizontal scaling and when vertical scaling might be more appropriate. So if you remember in the beginning, we have mentioned this black box for database. Scaling in database follows a different architecture, which is also very interesting. We will deep dive into database scaling in our next video. If in today's video, if you have learned something new, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep learning.